changes in government rule and regulation. Now, I will take us to something. I will show us now. If you go back to our question, in if you go back to our question in um go back to our question in uh where did I see this again? One minute, I'll show us. Yes, I've seen it. Now look at it. Please, I want us to follow me. I want you to please follow me carefully so that we can get this point. I'm uh, quickly turn with me to SCB3. SCB3, page 8. SCB3, page 8 of the precinct question. SCB3. Now, if you get to SCB3, last paragraph. The last paragraph says, Nigerian. Google now. The last paragraph says, Nigerian conventional market has been projected to grow at a compounded annual rate of 9.8%. Look at it. Over the, over the analysis period of 2021 to 2027, in terms of revenue, I can hear some noise at the background. I want to employ, if you are not the one talking, can you please mute yourself so that we can all enjoy the class. I can see Madam Taiwo Ade Lodu. She's uh, please mute yourself so that we can all enjoy the class. Please, sir, at what at, at what page, sir? Please, at what page, sir? Page eight. Page eight. Page, okay, SCB3. okay, thank. You. Okay, thank you, sir. Page thank eight. SCB three. Now, he said that Nigerian conventional market has been projected to grow at the compounded annual growth rate of. 9.8 over the analysis period of 2021 to 2027 in terms of revenue underline in terms of revenue in terms of revenue it will grow in terms of revenue he said look at it i want you to now take note of this factor the statement that follows said the key factors the key factors responsible for this market growth is number one increasing availability of different variety of candies and chocolates number two rising in trend of gifting conventionary number three rising disposable income i want you to take note of that three facts now the what i want to draw our attention to if you turn with me quickly to your calculation to sorry if you turn with me quickly to scb4 page 10 scb4 page 10 scb4 page 10 now look at the, i want us we are going to do calculation together now get your calculator beside you so that you can follow me we were giving revenue figure. Revenue figure for 2021 is 1.6 million. 1,635,000. Can we all see where I'm talking about? Can we can we all see the figure? Yes, sir. We can see yes, sir. It. Then for 2022, for 2022, the figure for revenue figure for 2022 is. 1,794.6 1,794,600,000 1,794,600,000 Did we all get the figure? Did we all yes, get sir. it? Good. Yes, now, sir. if you find the difference yes, between yes, the two If you find the difference between the two, that is the, the difference, you will see the difference is 159.6 thousand 159.6 thousand now if you find the percentage the percentage is what 9.76 percent 9.76 percent that is the percentage now if you approximate the percentage to the nearest one decimal place it will give you 9.8 percent it will give you 
Ahmed, you are raising your hand. You want to say something? Okay, so I'll continue. So I think he has been raising up his hand for a while. Okay, I think he has okay. something to say. Okay, good. So 9.8%, that is where they got that thing they said in the notes that Nigeria market uh, will, will increase is, is estimated is estimated to increase at the rate annual rate annual growth rate of 9.8 percent in terms of revenue so what i want you to do if they have told us that revenue will increase by 9.8 percent sorry means, sir i cannot see the screen oh that is why i was waving hand do you have copy of the precinct with you I'm yes, not sir. sharing my screen yet. Just yeah, I'm not sharing anything now. Okay, okay, I'm okay, not okay. sharing my screen now. I'm using okay, the precinct. Okay. I believe we all have the copy of the precinct question. Yes, 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 I have it. Okay, so I'm I'm presently talking on SCB 4, page 10. SCB 4, page 10. That is where I am now. So if you look at it, since we know the annual growth rate which is 9.8. Can somebody tell me what will be our revenue for 2023? Who can tell me what will, what will our revenue be for 2023? In the question, they've given us revenue for 2021. They've given us revenue for 2022. Who can tell me what will be our revenue for 2023? Okay, to save time, I'm going to tell us to save time. The answer is one million nine seven zero point four seven. One million nine seven zero four seven point four seven. Correct. Four seven zero eight. Correct. One million nine seven zero point four seven. Four four seven. Yes, sir. Yes. So, what will be our revenue for twenty twenty four? What will be our revenue for twenty twenty four? Okay. Please, how do you get the calculation, sir? It is oh. just you take your calculator, do 1.098. 1.098 multiply by the revenue figure for 2022. Multiply by the revenue figure for 2022. That is the two, two, okay, two okay. million zero nine four point four one. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. So the answer is 2024 revenue will be 2 million 163.58. 2 million 163.58. That is the revenue yes, figure for 2024. What is our revenue figure for 2025? What is our revenue figure for 2025? What will it be? Sorry, sir. Hello, sir. Hello, sir. How did you get 1.8, sir? 2024. 2025 will be 2 million 375. Correct. Point six one. The way I got Point it six, is no, the, you know, in the question, they told us that they told us that it is anticipated that revenue will grow annually by 9.8 percent. It is anticipated that revenue will grow by 9.8 percent annually every year on compounding basis are you getting it so all you need to do is to say 1.098 times the revenue figure in 2022 it will give you but it like that it will give you the year we are going to 2027 that is the year we are going to stop because the 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 period we are looking is what next five years that will end in 2027. So, tell me, what is our revenue figure for 2026? Two million six oh eight point three. Two million six oh eight point three. Very correct. Thank you, sir. It's correct. What is our revenue figure for 2027? Two million eight six eight six four point zero four. Correct. Yeah. Two million eight six four. Correct. This is how 
you are going to get it. This is how you are going to calculate it. Oh, in the exam. Most likely in the exam, they are going to. They've already told us you will be asked to estimate, to forecast. Remember, forecast is part mm. of your requirement. If you look at the, your responsibility, if you look at your responsibility, one of your responsibility is to forecast. I want to read it again so that we can get it. Exhibit one. One of the things they say you are expected to do as a responsibility is saying, where, where, where is it? They mention it somewhere here that you are going to do a forecast ahead. That's it. Assessing number, number four. Client, <laughs> number four, correct. Assessing the client financial and business forecast. So you will be expected to do a kind of forecast into 2027. That is what is going to happen in the exam. So that's why I made us do it up to 2027 so that you understand the dynamic of making forecast because they have already told us the percentage annually that the revenue will grow. Are you getting it? Now, the question I now want to ask, that is where the business risk coming. The business risk is the risk that is inherent in the business that can make the company not to achieve their revenue target. That can make the company not to achieve that estimated 9.8% annually. So the question is that what are the factors that can hinder the achievement of that 9.8% growth annually? What is the factor? So those are the factors. Number one factor that can hinder, because that is how you are going to explain it. They have already given us the answer, but they, you are going to turn it as the factors that will hinder achievement. Because that is that is the that is the purpose of business risk. If the company should take business risk, they will not be able to achieve it. You understand? That's why they say you should tell them the impact of business risk on what on the business forecast. This is the impact. That's what we are doing now. This is the impact. If 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 the company suffer, what are the business risk? What are the risk? Number one, number one, the risk. You know they told us that the factor responsible if the company suffer decrease. Bello, please can you mute yourself? Bello, can you mute yourself? If the company suffer decrease. You know in the question so number one is decrease in availability of different variety of candies and chocolates decrease in availability or or in instead of saying decrease you can even say inability or sorry unavailability unavailability of different variety of candies and chocolates that is a business risk that will affect that affect the company from achieving that 9.8 percent annually on availability or decrease in the availability of different candies and chocolate now if we say something for something to be available what is the wise thing for the company to do the company must make sure that they see they get all the material they need up to 2027 because once the material is not available, they will not be able to produce and they will not be able to meet their target. Or if they going to go and buy at higher price, uh, uh, because the two important thing is the pricing, how much you are buying the item, and the availability of the item of the raw material you need for chocolate and candies. That is that is those are the two key factors. You understand, and that is where business risk lies. When your source of raw material to produce is affected, then business risk has set in. It is what the possibility of inability or possibility of company not being able to meet up with their what set revenue target. That's business risk. Are you getting me? So, number one factor we have identified the factors that can hinder the from achieving this target. Number one is what unavailability of different variety of candies and chocolate number two number two is what decline decline in trend of gifting confessionaries gifting confessionaries the meaning of this let me explain gifting confessionary where it comes to that i in december a lot of these chocolates they are bought and used for ampers 
and gifts in December. You understand? They are used for amber. That's where the gifting comes from. They, they use chocolate as gifts to give to customers, uh, you know, people in the society as part of ampers or end of the year gift. That's where that's mean of gifting confessionary. That's where that's where it comes in. So if there is a decrease in the trend, then that will be problem. The business risk is setting. Number three, number three is number three is what decline in disposable income. Decline in disposable income. That is where business risk is also setting. Now, what is the factor that can affect disposable income? Inflation. When inflation, for example, imagine you, you, you even let us look at it ourselves. If my salary is 100,000 per month, and the way they are proposing to our president, Tinumbu, that they should increase VAT to 15%. If they increase 15 p if you, if you to 15 percent, it will automatically increase the prices of everything because VAT is a consumption price. Once you consume the item, you will pay VAT. This is a consumption tax. Are you getting me? Meanwhile, Lagos State will still collect their own consumption tax apart from VAT because VAT goes to federal government. Consumption tax goes to Lagos State government. And the company head office is resident in Lagos. So please, let's take note. Inflation, what will inflation do? Inflation will reduce the purchasing power of the disposable income. Inflation will reduce the purchasing power. You may be collecting 100,000, but what the 100,000 can buy is now limited. Imagine now, bag of rice is going for 80,000. And you are, you are any 100,000. You, you, you cannot buy bag of rice now because she, Rice in the color of my journey to have people go with a bag of rice. Nico, are you getting my point? I'm sorry for speaking my Yoruba dialect. <laughs> so, inflation will reduce what the purchasing power of the disposable income. These are the things that can what jeopardize the organization from achieving what annual rate, and it means that the company should look ahead. They should plan ahead to mitigate all those risks that can affect them from achieving those targets, from affecting that target. What is the target? 9.8% increase in revenue annually. So if they have already achieved it in 2022, that is, revenue of 2021 was increased gross by 9.8%. In 2022, then they should make sure that they work out the, their calculation very well to achieve that same increase or more in 2023 and in 2024 and like that up to 2027. So that is the area I want you to take note of. That is where the business risk comes in. Are we together? Hello, are we together? I need our response. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, I'm going to talk about the financial risk. So, I'm going to share my screen. Now, I want to talk about the financial risk. I'll quickly share my screen. Hello, sir. Sorry, before you go ahead to the financial risks, are these the only three things we are looking at under the business risks, sir? No, we can deduce more than that. I just, because of time, I just brought out these three. And these three I brought out were directly mentioned in the question. Okay. They were directly okay. mentioned in the question that they Thank are you, the key factors that can, okay. add, that can hinder the company from achieving that word, market goods. Okay. That's why I brought out those three. They are directly mentioned okay, from, the, from the exhibit four, right? Yes. So from exhibit three. Sorry. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Are, are we together? Yeah. yeah. Excuse me, sir. I want to ask a question, sir. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, Go ahead, sir. Please. The the nine point eight percent growth is it peculiar to this company? I thought it's a general growth. As in the yes. Nigerian you are right. It's, it's, it's general. But because we are not looking at general here, 
we are the we are the consultant we want to advise our client now they just told us that in nigeria oh, this is what is obtainable nigeria market but looking at the financials of our client our client had already achieved that same growth rate in 2022 i don't know whether you get the point yeah yes i guess you know they had already achieved it so it means that we should align with the market we should align with what what nigeria market is doing because you have to first of all conquer your jerusalem before you go to judea you have to first of all conquer the local market before you go international so they give us the statistics of what the global market and they told us that global market can do uh, what was the figure they gave us on the global market it was less than nine percent it was less than nine percent so it means that no. if they can do very well in the local market they will make the, they will meet the target their revenue target they will meet the revenue target you understand even despite they have not gone global but because nigerian alone uh, uh, they have the market they, they have the market are you getting it that's it hello please can i ask a question i don't know where you get the 9.8 um, percentage over the revenue so i'm trying to so, so i think the global one is 3.6 now i got the figure in sub3 i said it before i continue it's in sub3 page 8 the last paragraph yes sir. or second to the last paragraph you will see it there sub3 page 8 okay i can i, I can see thank you very much now i want to show us something and now what i have done um do i start okay now i want you to please everybody please turn with me to scb4 page 10 again SCB4, page 10. SCB4, page 10. We are here. Good. Now, if you look at the income statement, pay attention to this area. You will see that we were given finance expenses separately. Yes. We were given profit before income tax separately on the line. We were given income tax expenses separately on a line. The reason why they do that is to align with IFRS 18, okay. based on what IFRS 18 says. Because based on IFRS 18 say, IFRS 18, 18 said this is the five category of income or profit that you must disclose in your financial statements. Are you getting it? I just say I should point our attention to that. To that now, if from the calculation you will see our gross profit is what 734.0 for 2021, our gross profit for 2022 is what 855.4. Are you getting it? If yes, you take out the marketing and distribution expenses and administrative expenses, you know, the profit you are going to have, look at it though, for 2021, it is 442. And that profit is called operating profit before finance cost. For 2021, it's 442. For 2022, it's 51.2. 519.5 519.5 that is your what operating profit before finance cost so when you are rewriting your own in the exam you must show that you must show that profit you must calculate it separately it must show as a subtotal Remember, IFRS 18 has mentioned the, the thing that you must disclose as a subtotal in your calculation. They want to see it. They In this question, they, they deliberately did not want to give you all the answer. But if you understand what IFRS 18 says, 
you will know what to do. So, based on IFRS 18, we are supposed to have another line before the finance cost that is showing operating profit before finance cost. Then, followed by finance cost. Then, after that, you now have profit before income tax. Then, you will now have income tax. Then, you now have profit after tax. Are you getting it? So, it is very important. I just say I should draw our attention to that. But that is not where I'm going. Where I'm going, go, 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 is that I want to let me quickly draw our attention to something else. Look at the if you look at the total asset, look at the total asset. The total asset of this company is one million one four nine for 2021, and for 2022, one million two seventy eight point four. One million two seven eight point seven. 278.7. If you look at the share capital, look at the share capital, 10,000. How can you use 10,000 to generate this? Are you getting it? In, in, in financial accounting, that is what is called undercapitalization. In, in accounting, we call it undercapitalization. You cannot say you use 10,000 to be generating. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, what's it going on? If you are at least move to, if you are not talking. Now, but how were they able to augment in this business? How? It was because of their retain earnings. Retain earnings. Now, if you did, if you remember, CBN came up with a circular that the money deposit bank, Marshall Bank, and Microfinance, they should their 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 minimum capital should be increased. But condition is that you cannot use retain earnings as part of the as part of criteria to say, oh, I have increased my. If you go and read the circular. You will say that they say no, you cannot use your retained earnings. That is what this company is doing. They started business, share capital 10,000 naira, and they are now saying they are now using retained earnings of what 400 and 483.8 to boost it up to make it 493. Are you getting it? I know. Can you get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. We are with you, sir. Yes, Good. sir. We are with Thank you, sir. You. So now. Now, so the total equity they have is what? 493.8. Now, look at it, oh, look at it. If you go back to the, uh, go back to current assets up, you will see that in current assets, this company has inventory. They have trade receivable. And if you go to, um, where is it again? Now, the company, if you come down under long term liability, if you come down under, they have long term loan. Look at it. They have long term loan. Long term loan of 146.0 for 2021. And by the time we get to 2022, the long term loan of 146 has reduced to 88.3. What does it mean? They have paid off. They have paid off part of the loan it's because the loan has reduced from 146 down to what 88.3 now and the reduction is what 40 percent reduction is what 40 percent they were able to reduce the loan from 146.0 to 88.3 that means that is a 40 percent reduction in the loan but if you look at the total long term total long term liability which is 250 254.9 if you calculate the percentage of 146 all over 254.9 that is a 30% that is a 30% reduction 
that is the 30 percent are we together we don't get 30 percent yes sir we are together 146 all over 254.9 okay okay sir. please check is my calculation correct so the long term loans is 30 percent of the whole total non current liability sir thank you I'm checking if my calculation is correct too. Now it's supposed to be fifty-seven percent. It's supposed to be fifty-seven percent. Good. Yes, sir. Yes. Now, if it is fifty-seven percent, what does it mean? Are you, are you, are you, are you, if you remember when a loan, you know that when we are doing gearing to determine whether a company is highly gear or lowly gear, once it is above fifty percent, what does it mean? It's highly gear. God bless you, sir. It has reached its optimal level. Thank you. It has exceeded the optimal level because this is 57. You understand? What does it mean? If they have long term loan and the portion of the long term loan alone is 57. Now, even if you calculate 146, in fact, what you should be calculating is that equity capital. Let's, cal let's calculate the percentage of 146 all over 493.8. That is what we should do. The equity capital. Let's calculate. That is jeering. When you are comparing your long term loan together with the equity capital, you want to know that who and who is really financing the business. Are you getting it? Or what is the percentage? Now let, let's do it. I don't know if you can get my point. I don't know if you get my point. Yeah, is approximately thirty percent, sir. Thirty percent. Thirty percent. I got thirty percent. Thank you. That was where I got the thirty percent. Are you getting it? Yes. But even my people, I want you guys. I want you to pay attention. If you look at the, if you look at the, um, um, if you turn to page eleven, eh? If you want to compute this thing really, really, you will see on page eleven that the company has bank overdraft, and they have short term loan. So we will not only use the long-term loan, we will add both the short-term loan, we will add the bank overdraft in, and, and the long-term loan, we will now get the percentage all over the equity. I don't know whether you get the point. Okay, no this sense. is it. Do 15 plus, 15,000 plus uh, 150,000 plus 150,000 plus 146. God bless you, sir. Plus 146. What will it give us? 311. 311. 311. 311 divided by divided oh. by 493.8. What will it wow. give us? As massive. 63. 60 what? 63 percent is this company highly geared or not it's highly geared god bless highly you geared. Highly is highly geared what does it mean it means that truly truly the company has financial risk yes. once the company is highly geared, it means that they have financial risk they have exposure they are at the mercy of the what the loan the loan mm. capital the owner of the loan capital. I don't know whether you get my point. You know that we are for bank overdraft, you, you don't negotiate it. Once you don't pay, the interest will keep increasing on a daily basis. Bank overdraft is a daily basis. I don't know whether you get so this is how to calculate the financial risk that is in the business. So we have seen the business risk, we have seen the financial risk. That's why I want us to do it together. So that you can see how I got the figure. Are you getting it? Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. You. Thank you. So this 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 was how the figures you know were gotten, and the, the, this is it. So we have been able to establish that this company is highly jarred. Yes. This company is highly jarred, and even from my calculation, even from my calculation, you will see that. Even the journey ratio increased in 2022. So the company is what is highly geared. And it means that what 
they have financial exposure in their portfolio. They have financial exposure in their portfolio. You see, so why all of these things, you know, this is what I want to say. This, this is how to determine the relevant ratio you need to compute in order to get what you need to answer the question. You are not consigned to compute all the ratio that you know. You need only the relevant ratio. Since I've mentioned this thing, so it means that no one of the ratio you need to calculate is a jeering ratio. And you must get your parameter right. You must get it right. They have short-term loan. They have overdraft. Overdraft is still part of the loan. You will take it. Then you add it to what? Long-term loan. Now, the question I was, I would be expecting that you should ask me that, oh, under the long-term loan, we have employee benefit. We have different tax liability. Why did we not consider that one? Are you getting me? Now, because the truth is that when it comes to liquidation, when it comes to liquidation, are you getting me? Now, because, let me quickly say this. Let me quickly say this. Okay, maybe that information will be provided in the unseen. One of what I want to hey, say sorry, is sorry, to, now. sorry to come in, sir. Yes, sir. Um, this uh, call is saying that we end in 10 minutes. How are we going to continue? Oh, so we can't end in 10 minutes. So that's why we are starting earlier. Maybe they will need to restart and share another link. Well, uh, how, will I, how will we get the link? Some of us are now on the Telegram group. Ah. Um, another link will be um, provided and um, it will be sent to the Telegram group, all right? Thank you. Okay, so let's continue. So, what on the information that we are not yet given is that whether this long-term loan is a secured loan or it is an unsecured loan. Please take note. And that is where what is called professional skepticism. Professional scale, that is where it comes in. This is where your reservations, how to draw out your reservations, this is where it comes in. We don't have information whether this loan is what is a secured loan or is not a secured loan. We all know the difference between secured loan and unsecured loan. Abi, I believe so. Yes, sir. Mm. Yes, sir. What, sir? I want, to ask, I want you to repeat uh, all the stuff, what, sir? Eh? All, something all is have uh, under the professional skepticism. Yeah, professional secure and non secure. Uh, yes, I said this is where you draw your professional you reservation. 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 Yeah, this is where you draw your reservation because you are meant to mention what are your reservation on the question. We don't know whether this financial is audited or not. This, those are part of your reservation. But further information may be provided in the unseen question. You understand? But if it is not provided or they did not talk anything on it, that is where you now draw your reservation from. That you, some of the reservation you have that you don't know whether this account is audited. If it is not audited, it's subject, it's possible that some of these figures are not correct. Those are your professional reservation you are drawing. You understand because there is no information that says the figures have been audited. There is no information that this long-term loan is a secured, is secured loan or is an is is uh, is not uh, a secured uh, loan. Are we together? Yes, sir. Good, good, good. Now, part of the thing I want us to take note is this: if you look at the long-term loan, we were given employee benefits employee benefit this was part of the team when we talk about strategic way towards strategic task planning look at the employee benefit employee benefit in 2021 was 58.3 thousand meanwhile the employee benefits in 2022 was what 75.8 what does that mean they have increased it and don't forget that employee benefit is one of the allowable expenses. expenses. Yes. So if you are projecting, you will look at the percentage increase in this employee benefit. You will use it to recommend 
that the company should continue to increase the employee benefits for tax purpose, for, for tax planning purpose, in okay. order to minimize their tax liability. liability. That would be your part because it's an allowable expenses. Look at another thing is deferred tax liability. Deferred tax liability did not change. But does it supposed to change? Yes. Because if you defer tax liability means something that you are supposed to, you know, there is a way you can, um, um, I think it is loss relief that we did that thing, that you, 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 you defer a tax that you are supposed to pay now, you defer it. Let me give example. When, um, 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 uh, I want to remember this thing. I think it happens on minimum tax. When they gave us a, a conception to use, um, oh, I want to remember that thing. But I'll remember, let's continue to save time. I, I'll remember. So, you know, there's a way you can define your tax liability. So the question is that your default tax liability, is it supposed to be stagnant? If it should not be stagnant, what effect does it have? What benefit does it what? Does it have? Are you getting me? Those are the questions. Are you getting those are the questions we should look at? Now, um although the question is telling us that we have five minutes. Uh, one minute. Let me see what other thing that I put here. Okay, some of the things we have mentioned about this, uh, apart from the employee benefit, don't forget, um, we have mentioned about pension, we have mentioned about medical insurance. Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, Hello, sir. sir. Sorry, sorry to cut you. I hope we will get a recording of this, sir. Uh, is admin that can tell you. I think the last one they put the recording on the platform. Yes, yes, the last one there's a, a recording. Yes, yes, I think they put it. So we talk about pension, it's also an allowable. You know that the the employer contribution, the employer pension contribution is a is an allowable cost to the company. When we talk about income tax computation, you are you getting me? The the medical insurance you pay. Both for the MD and the this thing is also what is an allowable expenses for tax purpose. You understand? Another area you should draw your reservation was where they mentioned that staff discount. Staff staff are giving discount. You understand? And what he said was that you need to be careful because that staff discount can be taken to constitute benefit in kind, which it will increase what. In which it will increase the tax liability. That is the personal uh, personal income tax liability of the staff. You understand? You know the company has a responsibility to remit pay as we end to Lagos State and to Abuja Federal Capital Territory for the staffs in Abuja. Are we together? Because it is the this is the end of it. So they, are, they will also be held responsible for the stores, people working at different stores. Don't forget that they have 30 owned store and 20 franchise. So all the staffs that are working there, they are going to the Lagos State Government. We hold them responsible from the head office to, uh, to be answerable for the tax of those people. That's the way it works. Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. In a situation whereby the company increase all those allowable expenses, and we see it in the question that those allowable expenses are a huge amount of money. 
what can we do to advise the company? Okay, if there are huge expenses, I, I want to get your question. Like pension, like uh, yes. paying pension. You know when the when the pension is increased, employee benefit when it increased, it will reduce the tax liability of that company. In a situation we are by the company intentionally in order to evade the task, the task payment, and they increase the amount. Please, one minute, what one minute, our... to, one minute for this, uh, to end up, end up this thing, so that what is going to be our feet for coming back on it, if uh, we cannot get to you. I don't get I your question. What will be our feet? This thing is showing one now, minute now. One minute. One minute. Assuming the, the assuming the company. Oh, you will get it. You will get it. Don't worry. How did you get this one? How did you get the link to this one that you are doing? You will get it. The way you got this one, that's the way you get it too. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. I think another Let's one. Ahead, sir. Said on no problem. Please kindly join the meeting. Ending now. It's ending. The call is ending. I don't understand.